Is Tamara here? No. He already told you there is no Tamara here. Courtney, I love the world of The Strangers. I feel like it's one of the creepiest premises. It's like Dateline on crack. Now, uh, much of the original film comes from the idea of The Strangers being um, unknow unknow unknowable uh, random maniacs. How do you balance exploring uh, that also with now exploring the world of The Strangers? The world of The Strangers is a tone to me. And it's a milieu, is how I referred to it all the way through. And we have to stick to that. You know, because the first one was so great at establishing that fear of tension, suspense, and true terror, as I call it, and real horror, as I call it. So that became our dictum all the way through this, never to ever leave that place. And in fact, to try to get more intense as we went. Okay, that was the goal. That was the aspirational goal. On the strangers themselves, that was the inspiration. Two things, antagonist, protagonist. I want to know what makes those people tick, but in a real way, not in a phony way, right? And they don't talk, right? So how do I get deeper into why the hell does somebody put on a mask for whatever reason they do, go and terrorize some people, have fun with them? Because the original movie, they could have killed them 12 times, right, right. right? But they don't on purpose, right? It's not like some people, you know, are like, oh, well, why didn't they just go? They didn't want to. It's part of the fun for them, obviously, which is sick in of itself, right? And then when the time is right, they're done with that and they're gonna move on to probably somebody else, right? Because this is what they get off on. I'm fascinated to know what's in that mind. I think all of us are fascinated to know what's in the mind of a serial killer if we're into this stuff. At the same time, let's imagine you were in an environment where you couldn't just go hide out somewhere and you survived the initial attack, but you're deeply wounded, you're deeply f***ed. I mean, you were a normal person 24 hours ago, living a completely normal life with everything else. What does that person go through? And in a realistic way over a couple of days, if you really went through this, how would you really change? Not in the glossy horror movie way of doing it, but in a true character sense of what you go through and what you might become as a result of it. Antagonist, protagonist, that's what this is, we call it character-driven horror. The first one, the setup of the original Strangers was so damn good, yeah. that's just where we wanted to start, like that DNA, servicing our greater, bigger story because we ended up writing a 289-page script. This is just one giant movie, but it has to be divided into three chapters because it's too damn long to play any other way. Sure. You know, although one day we'd love to, Rennie and I have talked about, do like a special release where the real diehard fans are willing to sit there for four hours and tough it out from beginning to end and we'll give them some special surprises. But if Zack Snyder could do it, why not you guys, Why the right? hell not, right? Now, yeah. I gotta... And every Marvel movie you watch. No. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> now, uh, can you talk, what can you tease about the world of where the strangers come from and did you guys shoot all three of these movies back to back to back? At the same time. At the same time. Yeah, yeah. So it was one giant movie to us. So literally in the morning, she might be the Maya you saw in the movie, you know, in the car driving with him talking about being an architect, right? Everything ahead of her. And then in the afternoon, she'd come out from lunch and she'd have the full movie three like makeup and wardrobe and be a completely different person from four days later. And we'd be shooting that in the afternoon because the two things would take place in pretty much the same location. So that was the whole way, which was just wild to get your head around. Because in a normal script, it's hard enough to keep your head around the arc. But in an arc like this, it's a whole other to do, not to mention, and for her, she's like a superstar that she was able to just keep it together and never lose and turn into like, okay, now I'm movie three Maya, now I'm movie two Maya, now I'm like, you know, we would call it act one, act two, act three. Yeah, but anyway, that's you know, it. I love the way that Rennie builds tension. He does such a phenomenal job of making you kind of like clinch to your seat. Can you talk about working with him as a collaborator and what his directing style added to these next Well, time? I mean, he's, I've always found him to be one of the best shooters in the business. He's got an amazing eye, an amazing eye for composition, the way he moves the camera. That is Rennie's biggest strength of everything. You know, and interestingly, my biggest strength is story and character. Right, so we really made a good combination for each other. You know, once we found how we work well together, 
um, it's been like a dream, you know, the two of us working together. And, you know, we wanted this to be, which I hope you saw in the first movie, to be very much suspension, tension, and Hitchcockian sort of, you know, in so much as how the camera just slowly moves and you have an angle just sitting there and you just see the back of her in the distance, for example, you know, where we're looking down through like these things and just seeing. So it's always like somebody's watching you, but because they're all around, obviously. Um, so he was brilliant at putting those things together and working with our DP, Jose Montero. Um, and they gave it a look that was fantastic. Um, so yeah, it's been just an exhilarating, fun experience. I mean, sitting there with like director of like Die Hard 2 and right. Cliffhanger and Dark Blade. I mean, so it's like, you know, it's fun. You know, you're in a playground. Well, look, my <laughs> biggest mistake was watching this movie by myself last night. You watch uh, it by yourself? By myself. But not in a I, movie theater, right? Now I got to go see it in a movie theater because I that's the way to experience it. When you see the mix on that movie, it'll change the whole experience for you. Like, I'm telling you. Like, for sure. Like, people say that. I actually had three people that have, like, you know, been interviewing today. Be Like, they just went right to that. Like, they didn't even ask any other questions about the movie. They were just like, that was crazy. Because, um, you know, in the theater, we really pride ourselves on what we did there. I think horror is something you do in the movie theater because that's part of the experience. Like you go see an event film in a movie theater instead of that. So you gotta go. Now we'll I gotta get you go a back ticket. To the movie we'll get you a ticket.